Welcome to the TMS Plus training program. The Track Management System Plus is designed to help professional directional drilling operators be more productive in the installation of their horizontal directionally drilled projects. What I hope to achieve over the course of the next few sessions is just to give you a lot better understanding of how to use the TMS Plus program. Whether you're a current user or whether this is the first time you've used the software, what we're going to go through is we're going to take you through step by step how to plan bores, whether you need to know how far of a setback point you need, whether you need to know where an exit pit should be, uh, whether you need to uh, create a, a grade bore and you need to maintain a certain grade throughout this bore. Uh, we're going to show you how to map bores uh, and also how to create as builts. As builts are simply where you have a laptop computer out on the job site that gives you real time information uh, that you can see for instance when you're pulling back a product. Are you going to become an expert uh, with the TMS Plus program after going through this tutorial? Uh, some may, some may not, but what I will encourage you to do is to continue to map bores out and plan bores. That way you do become better at using the software and then when you do need to use it in a live situation uh, you'll be familiar with it and you can get the information out of it that you need uh, and very quickly. Hopefully at this point you've already got the software installed on your computer. If you haven't, let's just take a minute and discuss uh, the installation process of this software. It's installed just like any other computer program, so simply putting the disk into your computer and letting the computer recognize that you've done that, it will bring up instructions to walk you through the installation process. If for any reason you should have any problems with the installation, uh, if you'll look inside of the jacket that the CD came in, uh, there's complete installation instructions in there and if you'll follow those steps they can also help you get through the installation process. If for any reason you should need to contact uh, technical support there are two phone numbers listed on the inside jacket of the CD. One is a phone number that is good for uh, people inside of the United States that are using this software. The other phone number would be for people that are outside of the United States that may need to call technical support. So again, I want to welcome you to the TMS Plus tutorial. I hope that you find it useful. What I'd like to do in this session is I'd like to walk you through um, the licensing process of this software. There are two licenses available with this software, so what that means is you have the ability to put it on two different computers. Typically, a, a person may put this on like a laptop that they can have mobile. That way they can take it out into the job sites if necessary. And then they may put it on a desktop computer in an office. Once your uh, software is installed successfully, if you simply click on the TMS Plus icon that's now on your desktop, what you'll see is you'll get this TMS Plus licensing screen. These fields will all be blank when you first open up TMS Plus. If you notice down at the bottom it says there's a trial period. The typical trial period for this software is 30 days and so it will allow you to run uh, this program for 30 days before you must license it. What I recommend is that you do go ahead and license it uh, immediately upon insta installing it because you will get this prompt to license it every time you open it back up. You can simply choose to skip it, but what I do recommend again is that you go ahead and license it. So these first three boxes will be blank, but what is required here is that you input the username or your company name, then the serial number, and then also the product key number. Those fields will need need to be completed and the information such as serial number and product key can be found on the back jacket of the of the disk cover. So I do encourage you that you do not uh, get rid of that cover because you will need it again in the future when you go to install this software on another computer. The serial number field and the product key field are case sensitive so it is uh, important that you make sure you get the serial number and the product key put into those fields identically to the way they are in the back jacket of the CD. After those fields are, are filled in the next thing you're going to do is simply click on license. You'll see the uh, end user software licensing agreement. Be sure and read through that. Then the next thing you're going to do, if you notice over to the right, there's two options. Request license by internet or request license by telephone. I would simply click request license by telephone. You'll see once again that uh, 
that the phone numbers are listed at the top there for you to contact technical support if you should have to. Um, notice the other fields that are grayed out down below. Your name or company name should be grayed out, the product key, the serial number. When you call Subsite Technical Support at this point, what we're going to ask from you is what the installation ID number is, and that number is found right here. This is the number that you will need to give us before we can issue you a password. Once we issue a password to you, go ahead and input it into the password box. I'll do that now. I will say also as I'm typing this um, that it is very important that you uh, save the disk case like I mentioned earlier because you will need this information again. The installation ID for the next license that we will issue you will be separate or it will not be the same password so you cannot use the same password for both installations. Once your password is input into the password box, if you simply go to the OK tab, click it, you should see that the program takes you to the control panel. If you see this, um, your installation, your license was all successful and you're ready at this time to, to use the TMS Plus program. One other bit of information I will add, if you look down at the bottom of the control panel, it will tell you what version of TMS Plus you're running. Currently, the, the most current version out is 3.7.0, so if you're running anything uh, lower than that, then I encourage you to go to ditchwitch.com. If you follow the Equipment tab, then you go to the Tracking Electronics tab. Then if you look for the TMS Plus uh, information page, about midway down that information page, there is a software update that will get you to the current version, which is 3.7. Um, anytime in the future that we have or bring out updates to this TMS software, you will get those updates for free, but you have to do it through ditchwitch.com. Before I start talking about navigating the control panel, I want to visit with you a minute about the current uh, software version you're running of TMS Plus. The most current version is 3.7, and your version can be found on the lower right hand corner of the control panel. If you're running anything less than 3.7, I would encourage you to go to ditchwitch.com. If you are at the main page of ditchwitch.com and you'll click on the equipment page, then if you'll click on the tracking electronics page, then if you'll find the TMS Plus page, on that page is where you can find the update to get you to 3.70. 3.70 has all the latest uh, jet track information on there, plus it has some new plan wizards that we'll discuss later on in this tutorial, so it'd be very beneficial for you to have the latest version so when we get into this discussing it, you'll be able to follow along with me. First of all, on the control panel, if you'll just go up to settings, click on the settings tab, you'll notice that it comes up to a box that shows language, units, and date and time. In the language tab here, this is simply where you can show how TMS Plus is displayed, what language. Also, you have the ability in this page to change the way the fonts are displayed and their sizes. The next thing here is the Units tab. If you click on the Units tab, this box here, the Length Units, simply allows you to choose whether you would like uh, the units of measurement to be displayed in metric or in U.S. foot. Next, if you'll scroll down to Precision, Precision is simply the number of places right at the decimal point that TMS Plus will be displayed. What's important to know about the precision box is if you were running an 86BG for instance, which is our grade beacon, it displays pitch in tenths of percent. So you will want to be able to see one or maybe two places past the decimal point. If you're not running a grade beacon and you're running just a standard 86B or BH or even an 88B, you may only want to show the precision at zero. At this point you can click on the date and time tab. Date and time tab gives you the option of how TMS Plus will display the date and time. Now if you just scroll down to the OK tab, notice it takes you back to your control panel. The next tab I'd like to talk to you about is the download tab. If you click on the download tab, this brings up instructions on how to, to uh, download information to a remote display that may be in the console of a jet track or maybe in a standalone case uh, that would be like on a 920 or 920L 
you may even be running a competitor's machine, but you're running our electronics. You still have the ability to utilize the TMS Plus program. At this point, you will need the 50-foot gray RS-232 cable that came with the, the TMS Plus program when you purchased it. Notice there'll be a connection point on one end that goes to the jet track. On the other end, there'll be a connection point that goes into your computer. Follow these three steps below to get your computer hooked up to your remote display. Next, if you'll click on Continue, it brings you to a page where it allows you to select the COM port. You may or may not be using COM port 1 for your computer. So in this box, it gives you the ability to change or select a different COM port. Next, if you'll hit Continue, this is the step where it will walk you through how to retrieve that information from the remote display. Now, remote display, whether it be a 750 display or our most current display, which is a 752, gives you the ability to store jobs internally. So, you can store up to 10 jobs with up to 254 pipes per job of information before you will have to download it to the computer. If you'll follow these instructions in the download tab, you shouldn't have any issues downloading information or retrieving it from your remote displays. If you do for any reason have any problems in this download process, again, the two phone numbers are listed here for technical support that you can contact us and we'll be glad to walk you through that process also. At this point I want to discuss the plan tab. If you'll click on the plan tab, what you see is you get a choose job box opens up. This is the point where you can either create a new job or you can open an existing job. The instructions are listed above and below here on how to do both of these, but what I'm going to do first of all is just walk you through how to create a new file. So if you'll click on new file, you'll see that the TMS Plus program opens up into the Save As box. What you're seeing here is it should open to the data folder. You'll see one file already present here. This is Skeleton Creek Bore. This is simply a sample bore that we'll discuss a little bit later in the tutorial. What I want to do right now is just simply name a new file for us to use at a later time. So we'll label it TMS Plus Practice Bore and then click Save. Notice it opened us up to a blank grid at this point, we'd be ready to start inputting uh, features and layers into the TMS Plus program. For now, let's close it. Do we want to save changes to the program? Yes. Now, let's go back and open up TMS Plus. Starting again at the Plan tab. This time, I want us to choose an existing file. Simply click on the existing file. Notice the TMS Plus Practice Bore is now displayed. At this point, if we wanted to open up the TMS Plus Practice Bore file, all we'd have to do is simply double click on it. Now we're back to our blank grid. Let's close that file again. Do you want to save? Yes. Now what I want to do real quick is just mention the, the user's manual that is on this disk. Now, because I'm taking you through a step-by-step -step process of how to input information into TMS Plus and what it'll do, I'm not going to cover the user's manual, but I do want you to be aware that it is on the program. It's on the control panel tab. It's one of those. Uh, if you simply click on the user's manual tab, you can then see that it opens up to the help topics section. So a lot of the information, or all of the information, I should say, that is on the TMS Plus and things you can do, uh, with this software is in this user's manual. So if at any time uh, after this tutorial you have questions and you're in the process of building a plan or downloading information and you have questions, you can come to this uh, user's manual to get those questions answered. Okay, in this session what I want to accomplish with you is just getting you familiar with the grid uh, in the main screen of, of the TMS Plus program when you're planning a bore. This area or field right here is what we call the planning grid. This area over here to the left is what we call the layer manager. Remember, topography, plan, 
these are layers that we will paste onto the grid. This top bar is what we refer to as the menu bar. The bar underneath it is what we would call the toolbar. These tabs are simply shortcuts to the same tools that you can use in the menu bar. You can edit layers through the edit button here. You can actually edit or change or delete layers through the layer tab. The plan wizards, we'll cover those in a different session. Then there's the view tab, which you can zoom in and out, which I talked about earlier also, that you can use F5, F6, or F7. And then, of course, there's a help tab that takes you to the user's manual. Then we have the toolbar, which you have simply a save button. You have the print tab. You have a select arrow. There's a move button. If you were to click and uh, click on the move button and then you clicked on a point, uh, you could move that point. If you clicked on the draw button, this is how you add points or plan points, topography points. If you needed to erase one of those points, you can simply click on the eraser tab and highlight that point. It will ask you if you'd like to delete it. You have a ruler that will give you distances between points. You also have the Add Layer tab and the Delete Layer tab. You have a View Reports tab. Notice if I click on the View Report tab, I have the plan layer highlighted. If I click on the View Report, it will bring up a box that would give me, if I had three or four points of a plan created, they would be listed here. On Topography, if I click View Report, it would list every topography point that I had inputted onto the planning grid. This tab here removes the grid. If you do not want the grid displayed, you can click on it. The Plan Wizard tab, this is what gets you into either Plan Wizard for creating a grade bore or simply a critical point bore. We'll simply cancel these for now. This button here is actually how quick the grid will zoom in or out, depending on which, whether it's 100 times, whether it's 1 or 10. If I hit the zoom in button, notice it's zooming in 10 increments at a time. If I change it to 100, I can zoom out. And then simply 1 zooms in much slower. This button here simply zooms you back to zero, zero, so zero horizontal, zero vertical. If at any point I'm off of that zero point and I hit this tab here, it will take me back to the center of the grid. Notice I can zoom or move the grid up and down to these two vertical arrows. We can move it side to side here. We can move it diagonally. The top and side view, notice we're in side view. You can actually go to a top view, but all you're going to have here is a straight line. Because we have no beacon at this point that gives left-right information, you will never have any information other than a straight line here. So probably all you're going to be using is the side view. If you would like to make your grid larger, you can click here, simply drag over, and your grid will be larger. Most of this information I just covered with you will become much more clear whenever we get some information on the, the planning grid that we can move and change around. Okay, what I'd like to do in this session is show you how you can view downloaded bores that, that you had already uh, saved to your computer. Uh, say you had a series of jobs in the remote display that you just downloaded to the computer and you'd like to go view those jobs now. This is the steps uh, we'll follow to view those bores. If you just click on plan, remember you come to either new file or existing file. Since we don't have a, uh, a plan already in place that we want to paste this bore onto, we'll choose new file. If you did have a, 
a plan already created and you wanted to paste the actual board that you did onto your plan, then you would choose existing file and then go find that job that you already had the plan for. So let's choose new file. Remember you want to be in the data folder. There's the other job that we previously created. We're going to create a new one. Let's name this download. Download number one. We'll click save. Notice it opened us up to a blank grid again. What we have to do at this point in order to view that bore is we have to add a new layer. And we can do that by going up to the green plus sign, which is add a layer. If you click on it, your layer type box comes up. What we want to choose is pilot bore. At this point, a bore properties box opens up. There's several things that are important about this screen. Number one is just the layer name. If we were to change that here, it would simply change this layer over here from new bore to whatever change we made. Uh, this, these two boxes visible and flags. You'll understand a little bit more when we get to the next screen what the flags are for, but we want to leave those highlighted and I'll explain why in just a minute. We want this layer to be visible when we close this four properties page out, so we need to make sure the visible box is checked. Serial port is simply, if you remember in the download session, uh, we choosed, uh, or we chose serial port number one. Uh, this could be serial port number two depending on which one you're using for your downloading process. The HDD unit, notice we have all the jet tracks available here that, that the Charles Machine Works make. So you pick the machine that you've been using for this job. Notice as you pick different machines, the drill pipe length will change here. Diameter is simply the diameter of the bit you're using or the product you're pulling back you do need to change that accordingly. You can do that by highlighting and typing the number in or you can simply use the up and down arrows. Bin radius. If you do not change the bin radius, notice that the bin radius also changes for the machine that you're using. It's drill pipe. That is the bin radius of the drill pipe. Now, something I will add if the bin radius of the product that you're pulling back is greater than the bin radius for the drill pipe on the machine, you need to input that number here. It's very important to make sure you take that into account. Attributes are simply information that you want displayed on your reports page. You can select them all or you can just simply choose the ones that you want displayed. And I will show you that reports page also. This 90D and 750D tab, you're always going to want to make sure that the 750D tab is, is uh, pressed in. Even if you have a 752 remote display, you're going to choose 750D. Click OK. Notice what we've done now is we have a black square right in the center of the grid. At this point, we are now ready to go import the downloaded information onto our grid. So if you go to the red arrow that's pointing down. That's the import data tab. Click on that. This choose type box comes up. What you're going to pick here is you're going to pick 750 data file. Your downloaded information will be stored in this data folder here. So if you double click on that, you notice you have a job there, a download. If you had a series of 10 jobs in your remote display that you downloaded, you would have 10 of them listed here. They would start as J01, J02, and so on. This represents the year, then you have the, the uh, month, then the day, and then the time, and it will be a .750 file. If you double click on this bore, notice it just pasted that downloaded bore onto the grid. That is how you view downloaded files from your remote display. Now if we would have had a plan for this bore, we would have just simply opened up existing file, clicked on that bore plan, then we would have done the same steps and pasted this bore over our plan. Remember earlier I was talking about the flags. If we were to check, uncheck the flags, they would not be vis visible here. But what this has given us, since we didn't have any topography points, 
basically it gave us a rough idea of where our topography was because these flags represent where the tracker was when the information was taken from the beacon and then sent back to the remote display so you could actually even build a rough topography based on where these flags are positioned that's the download process uh, on how to retrieve downloaded jobs uh, and to view them what I want to do in this session is I want to cover the Skeleton Creek bore with you which is a sample bore that's included on the TMS Plus program and we'll walk through that and I'll show you some different features on that so if you'll click on plan go to existing file double click the Skeleton Creek bore notice when I first open it up I cannot see the job yet I know there's a job created on this file because of all the different layers that are already on it so all I have to do is hit the F7 button and it simply takes me directly to the bore now at this point if you'll hit the F5 button on your keyboard it will zoom you in each time you press the F5 button F6 button on your keyboard will also zoom you out so we'll zoom back in a little Now, what I want to do is I'm just going to show you some of the different things you can do with the TMS Plus system. Notice we've, we've got topography points here represented by the brown line. Over here on the side, these are all the different layers that we have input or put onto this grid. And these are all things I will show you in later sessions. But what I wanted you to do is get an idea of of what is all on the TMS system and what you can put into it. You can put text features, you can put obstructions or utilities. If I highlight the layer over here to the left, I can see that utility here. If I double click on it, I can get information about it. It's four foot deep. It's 150 feet away from my punching point. What this line here represents is our bore plan. This here. Notice we've got topography, we have a creek. We can list our actual pilot bore. Notice over to the left, I clicked on the actual pilot bore layer. It represents the pilot bore with these circles. Remember the flags I talked about in an earlier session. Notice how they're showing up on here. The reason why they're showing up on this back ring portion is because this particular bore, the actual back ring was mapped itself. And you would have to do that also if you wanted to log or map a back ring. So you have a good idea of the way you can make topography. You can do a plan. You can input, input plan points. You can input images. You can show your actual bore, your pilot bore. You can go look at that pilot bore's reports page. What this reports page is, is this is rod for rod data on what it would take to achieve this bore. It gives you the pitches, gives you the depth that you should be at on each rod, shows you your away distances. It also gives you a total length of the bore. So, if you remember back in one of the earlier sessions also on our bore properties box, these are the attributes that we listed as we either wanted displayed or not displayed. Close that box. Takes us back to our grid. Spend some time looking at Skeleton Creek, um, viewing it, and look at the different features that you can input on to the TMS Plus program. In this session what I want to do is I want to show you how to input topography points, how to delete those points if necessary, how to move those points if you need to, and uh, 
how to get a, a just a quick general understanding of the topography layer. Uh, it's very simple to input points. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Notice right now we're in the planning grid. But if you go over to the left hand side to the layer manager, if you click on topography and highlight that, then click on the pencil, you're ready to start adding topography points. You can actually let's scroll back over here to zero zero. You can actually go two different ways to do this. One, notice the crosshairs there. I can simply hover over the top of the grid until I get the point lined up that I want. When I click on that, it brings up a properties box for this particular topography point. I can either manually change these figures here, or I can use the up and down arrows. Elevation is simply up and down from this zero point here. Away is either minus or positive from this zero point here on your grid. Lateral will always stay at zero because we have no left right information. We've just created a point, our first topography point. Let's add another. The other way that you can do it is just by simply clicking on the mouse and letting go of it. The properties box comes up. If you're okay with the information there, you can just okay it. You've got another point. Again, clicking and dragging, you're building topography points. Scroll over a little. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and build a, a quick topography uh, layout for a plan that we can use at a later time. Now I've just created some topography points or a plan. What I want to do is I'll scroll out a little by hitting the F6 button so you can see more of the plan. I want to show you now how you can how simple it is to move a point. If you've still got your topography layer highlighted, if you click on the move button, then you click on that point and hold the mouse button down, you can move that point wherever you want to. When you drop it, you can move it out, up, down. When you drop it, your properties box will come back up. At that point, you can fine tune it if you'd like. Okay, we can move the next point. Properties box comes up again, and so on. Say we want to delete a point. Deleting a point is very simple. Scroll over here to the end. If we wanted to remove these two points, all we would have to do is click on the erase button. Click on that point. Do we wish to remove this data? Yes. Let's remove this one. Yes. Now we want to add a couple more points back. Simply go back to the pencil. That's how easy uh, adding topography points is. Remember, it's only as detailed as you make it. So if you don't have an exact survey with exact elevations and distances, then that's okay. You can still get a pretty basic plan set up. Um, and if you do have exact survey points and you put those in, you can also uh, make a very accurate plan that way also. Over the course of the next few sessions, what I want to do is show you how to create a simple plan. I want to start by showing you how to add a punch in point, a leveling off point, and then a point where we will start our uh, exit angle. Then also I'll show you how to add a punch out point. I'll show you basically how to manipulate this plan. If you need to fix any exceeded bend radiuses, then I'll show you how to do that also. And at the end of those sessions, then we'll cover the two different types of plan wizards that are included in the TMS Plus. Now to begin, all we have to do, I have me a, a job opened up here that already has topography points added in. Over on the layer manager on the left, I have topography layer and then a plan layer. What you need to do is highlight the plan layer go to the pencil tab, click on it, come back down to the start of your topography. What I want us to do is create a punch in point here at zero um, elevation and so there's two different ways you can do this. You can either hover with the mouse cursor over the top of the point where you want to add that point or you can simply click anywhere on the screen and you'll get this properties box. Either way when you click on the mouse 
you're going to get your properties box that comes up allowing you to fine tune that point if you will so the away point here is simply the distance away from zero let's go ahead and set that at zero two different ways again you can do that you can either highlight it type on the keyboard zero or you can use the up and down arrows lateral is always going to stay zero uh, the reason why is because we have no left right information coming from our beacon depth we're going to make it zero now if you had a entry pit there that distance or that depth excuse me may be uh, minus one foot but for now let's leave it zero pitch is our entry pitch let's make it uh, say minus eighteen a typical entry pitch yaw is simply the same as lateral it's left right information that we do not use at this time so that will also stay at zero once you click OK notice we now have a plan point and that's our entry point if for some reason I decided that's not where I wanted my entry point all you have to do as long as plan is still highlighted in the layer manager go up to the eraser tab highlight it come back down to that point click on it do you wish to remove this item and delete its data click yes now your point is removed so let's go back and add it quickly click on my pencil away is zero lateral stays zero depth is zero pitch we're gonna put minus 18 y'all stay zero click OK we've just added our entry point back in in this session what I want to cover with you is just how to add a point that we're going to level off or be coming off of our entry angle so if you go highlight plan again highlight the pencil you're ready to add another point say for instance this particular contractor that you're doing this job for wants you to be at 90 foot out they want you to be 20 feet deep so all you have to do is click on the grid again let's make this a waypoint 90 or 90 feet lateral will stay zero our depth we want to make 20 I want to show you what uh, a common mistake is and that people do when they're planning a job let's say we want to be at 20 foot deep there so people will put a minus 20 okay pitch will be at zero y'all will stay at zero once you click OK notice what happened it placed our next plan point at plus 20 well that's because the TMS plus automatically recognizes any depth point as a negative number so you do not have to place the negative in in front of that depth so what we need to do is we need to remove this point go click on our eraser tab click on the plan point yes we wish to remove it go back click on the pencil come back out to 90 now we can fix this we need to be at 90 foot away lateral is zero our depth will stay 20 pitch we want to be at zero and y'all will stay zero click OK now we have the correct plan point in there notice also that we're a little bit deeper than 20 foot according to our grid but if you measure this distance between the topography points and your plan point that'll be 20 feet and that's what we're wanting to achieve now in this session what I want to do is is show you just how to add a point that uh, we're going to start coming off of our zero pitch say for instance this contractor wanted us to uh, stay at zero pitch under the length of this creek so at this point we can simply scroll over to another portion on our grid and we'll add that third point plane is highlighted our pencil is highlighted so we're going to come over here say about 150 feet that's where we can start coming off of zero and start our uh, our exit angle click on the grid 150 feet comes up lateral stays zero let's keep our depth at 20 pitch at this point will also be zero and y'all will be a zero click OK we've just added that third point now you can create a simple plan with only using three points you could have an entry point you could have one point in the center here if you wished and you could also have an exit point 
I've found it much easier myself to go ahead and create four plan points. So what we've done is uh, we've just added that third point. Now all that's left to do is add our exit point. Now the last thing we need to do to finish this plan is add our exit point. Let's say out at 230 feet, we want our exit point to be plan is highlighted, pencil tab is depressed, go over to 230 feet, click on the grid, fix the away point to 230, lateral stays zero, our depth we want to be at zero because we want to punch out, pitch for now let's go ahead and put it 18 because we're coming up now so it's going to be a positive 18, y'all will also stay zero, click OK, we've just added our exit point. Okay, what I want to cover with you in this session is how to complete your plan. What we've done is we've already input four plan points. The next thing we need to do to complete this is to add a pilot bore layer. So if you go to the green plus sign, choose pilot bore, you get a bore properties box that comes up. This is the box where we're going to select some different attributes. Uh, we're going to select our horizontal directional drill that we've used. Um, we're going to uh, manipulate the pipe length if needed, the diameter of the hole, and the bend radius. So in the first box, the layer name, if you want to change that here, you can. That will simply change this heading here. The visible and the flags boxes, just leave both of those checked. The serial port box, uh, typically people will just leave that at serial port number one unless you've already been through the download process and you know that you utilize a different serial port with your computer, then you might want to change that here. The horizontal drill that you're going to be using, it's very important to make sure you choose the proper drill. Notice as I choose different drills, the information over here to the right also changes. The bend radius, the drill pipe length. So what we're going to do for this scenario is just choose JT2020. Notice that the drill pipe length is 10 foot. This diameter box is simply the diameter of the hole that you're cutting or the bit size that you're using or you can also input the diameter of the product that you're pulling back. The bend radius, if nothing has changed here, will be the bend radius for the drill pipe. It's also very important to remember that if the bend radius for the product that you're pulling back is greater than the bend radius for the drill pipe, you will want to input that information here. You can either highlight it and change it from the keyboard or you can simply use the up and down arrows. The attributes box what these are is information that will be displayed on the pipes page and I'll cover that in a few minutes too but anything that is checked will show up on the reports page. The next thing is just make sure the 750D tab is clicked or highlighted. Once you click OK what we've done is we've just input the bore layer to our plan and we've completed that. Okay, now that we have added our pilot bore to our plan, you might see that or notice that we have some red indicated here in our bore path. If you'll go over to plan layer and highlight it, you'll get a clearer view of the red here. Now what this red is indicating is that we've either exceeded the bend radius of our drill pipe or we've exceeded the bend radius of the product that we're pulling back. Now there's a couple ways that we can eliminate this exceeded bend radius. One is simply if you choose the move tab, come back down to say for instance your entry point. If you've got the move tab selected, you can click as long as your plan layer is highlighted, you can click on this point and hold down on your left mouse and you can drag this entry point Notice that when I drop that point, the properties box comes up again and I can fine tune that if I need to. You can also grab the second point. You can move it. Properties box will come up again. You can drag any of these points, pick them up and move them, and try to eliminate the bin radius that's exceeded that way. Notice how when I simply moved out my exit point, I took care of the exceeded bend radius on this third point. 
Also, another way that you can you can correct this exceeded bend radius is simply by manipulating the pitch or your entry pitches. So if I go back to uh, this first point, select my select arrow. If I click on this first point, remember the bend radius we put in there was a minus 18. Let's try to go in and say a minus 24. Click OK. Still didn't correct the bend radius, but if we go back and choose our move button, what we may have to do now is we may have to move this first point, the entry point, back a little. Once we do that, click OK. We've, we've moved our set, set up or punch in point back a little bit and then we also created a little bit of a bend radius again here. Let's click on this point and try to move it a little. See by simply moving it up it's eliminating some of that bend radius or it's taking it out altogether. Remember the properties box will come up again. If you need to fine tune anything like the depth or the pitch you can do that here. So now we have all of the exceeded bend radiuses eliminated. Now as long as the contractor you're doing this job for is okay with you moving your punch in point back somewhat, moving your exit point out somewhat, uh, you're good to go. We've created a plan that is clean. There's no exceeded bend radius from either the drill pipe or the product bend radius being exceeded. In this session what I'd like to cover with you is how we add additional layers or uh, other images to your TMS Plus plan or map and those features could be utility lines, they could be line features, image features as in uh, a jet track image. We can do all that and put that information on this map here. So what I want to cover first is just simply how to add an obstruction. Say you have a, a power line that's in, in the ground that you definitely have to avoid. You can map those and list them on this grid. So the first step you would do is simply go to the add a layer tab which is up here it's the green plus sign if you click on it you bring up this layer type box what we want to add is we want to add an electrical obstruction double clicking on that brings up the layer name what we want to put here is we can put let's say this is a uh, 25 uh, kva power line we want it to be visible, so we definitely need to leave the visible box checked. The diameter of this line, let's say it was a 12 inch line, just so we can see it on the screen also. Now here's one of the nice features and it's very important, is the minimum clearance zone. Say you have to maintain a 36 inch clearance zone around the diameter of that pipe or that electrical cable. This is here, this is where you can input that information we need to maintain a 36 inch clearance. Click OK. It hasn't put anything on the grid at this point, but it did create the new layer over in the layer menu field. All we have to do now, since it is highlighted, simply click on the pencil, go to the point on the plan where that electrical obstruction is at, place your cursor where you want to lay that image, We'll say it's 60 foot away from our punching point. We'll say it's at 7 foot 2 inches deep. Click OK. We've just placed that electrical cable on your plan, including the clearance zone. Another nice tool that I've mentioned earlier is if, say, you wanted to measure this distance from this cable to your drill string, you can simply go up to the ruler, click on the ruler tab, come back down to the bottom of the electrical cable, click on the left mouse button and drag down to your drill string and then lift off the button it shows you're six foot one inches away from the bottom of that which is plenty because we put a 36 inch clearance zone now let's add another feature go to the add layer I'm going to add another yeah, another feature let's add a gas obstruction Let's say this is an 18 inch gas main. We want it visible. 
diameter is 18 inches. Clearance zone again, we need to be 36 inches clearance. Click OK. Notice it's been added to our layer field. We have to select the pencil again. We'll come over here, drop where we want it to be, 160 foot out. Depth, let's just make it 10 foot. Click OK. There, you just added that 18 inch gas main with the clearance zone included. At this point what I'd like to do is cover with you how to add text features to a bore plan or profile. Say for instance here in the center of the grid you wanted to add a title to this map. All you'd have to do is go to the add layer tab, click on the text feature, we'll name that map title, make sure your visible box is checked, click OK. Once you've done that, all you have to do is click on the pencil tab, place the cursor on the grid where you wish to place this text feature, a properties box will come up, you can fine tune that, or you can move the text at a later time. Go to the notes page, this here is where you would type the text that you want to display it on the grid. We'll just name this Bear Creek Crossing. Now here you can also change the font. Let's find a, fall, a font that's common. We'll change the text size so it'll be very visible. We can even place it in bold print if we'd like. Once you OK that, we can choose the color. Let's choose black. OK that. Once you OK this properties box, it now places your text on the screen. In this session what I want to cover with you is how to add a line feature. Um, you could use this feature in a lot of different ways, but let's just take for instance at, the, at this point by the creek there was a retaining wall uh, several feet wide that uh, we wanted to show on the map. All we would have to do is go to the add layer tab again. We're going to click on line feature. Let's just say it's retaining wall. Make sure visible is checked, the box. Also in this properties box you have a feature properties. What this does is allow you to change the color of that line text if you want. Also the width. If you have it like at a 1, it's going to be very narrow and it will be hard to see. Uh, so let's bump this up a little bit so we can make it more visible. Click OK. Same thing just like when we added our utility line instructions. Until we click on the draw tab and we have that layer highlighted we cannot add that feature so let's go over here say the retaining wall is, uh, is four foot above the elevation and it's at 90 foot out click OK we have one small box what we can do is come down to the surface of the topography again Click OK. Now what we've done is we've just created a small line feature. You could use those vertically like we just created. You could use them horizontally to build like a road, uh, a bridge, railroad tracks, anything uh, that you could think of on a way to use the line feature. That's how you would input that information. What I want to cover with you in this session is how to add an image feature to your bore plan. Say for instance you wanted to put a picture of a Jet Track 520 here. All you have to do is go to the Add Layer tab, click on Image Feature. We'll name this JT520. Make sure your visible box is checked. Click OK. You'll click on your pencil. This image layer is still highlighted so you can now add it to the grid. Once you click on the grid, you'll get this properties box for that image. Here again, you can put your way. Let's make it at zero. Our elevation is zero. The next thing you must do is click on this image tab. Then you'll click on this folder tab. Most of the time, TMS Plus should open up into this clip art folder. If for whatever reason it does not, in this look-in box, 
sometimes I've seen it open up into the TMS Plus folder. Your images are in this clip art folder, so just click on it again. Then you'll have all these images you could paste in there. We'll pick JT520. If you'll double click that, it places that file here. You could preview that if you wanted. It shows you the picture, or you can go back to edit. If you click OK, now you have that image pasted on your plan. If you want to move that image, just go to the Move button, click on the brown square, then you can move that image to exactly where you want it. It will drop the Properties box up again. You can fine tune it if you want, or you can click OK. And now you've just placed an image on your bore plan. OK, now what I want to cover with you in this session is simply what the Pipes page or the Reports page can do for you and what, what all the information that it includes. If you simply highlight the bore layer, notice it puts our pilot bore back on our plan. If you go to the Reports page tab, click on it, maximize this screen, and what we have here, this is what we call our Pipes page. What it is is it's rod for rod data on each drill pipe, the depth that that pipe should be, uh, the pitch that it should be, the date, the time, the bin radius, the length of that pipe. All these are, are those attributes that we selected on that bore properties page. If there was any of this information that we did not want selected, we could simply uncheck it in the bore properties box and it would not be displayed on the pipes page. This pipes page is showing us that it's, it will take 26 pipes to complete this job or this plan that we just made. So this is a very valuable tool or piece of information that you can use. You could either utilize this in a way as giving it to a contractor or your crew that is doing this job for you by the drill operator and the person tracking this bore. Simply having this information in front of them can help them greatly in uh, being successful at completing that bore. So remember, if we want to go back, let's close this for one second. If you want to go back to the attributes page and select what you do or do not want displayed, if you have the bore layer highlighted and you double click it, it's going to bring your bore properties page back up. Going over here to the attributes box, if I select every one of these, click OK go back to my reports page. Notice that it put every bit of that information on this one sheet. So you're really um, you're really not limited to what you can display on this reports page. If we want to go back and remove any of that information, go back to the bore properties page. Just uncheck the information that you do not want displayed. Click OK, go back to the reports page. There you have it. So just remember, this is very useful information uh, that a drill operator and a tracker, uh, person tracking the bore could take and help them be successful at completing this job. In this session, what I want to cover with you is how to utilize the three different types of bore planning wizards that are on the TMS Plus program. What a bore wizard is, is basically is it helps you uh, plan out a job very quickly. So if you go up to your menu bar, click on wizards, notice you have bore planning and an entry reversing wizard. Let's talk about the bore planning wizards that are included first. When you click on the bore planning wizard, this box comes up with some information that you need to read over. It's the same information for the grade bore and the critical point bore. But what we have here is we have the critical point bore wizard simply gives you three points that will put onto a plan for you. It's an entry point, it's an exit point, then there's a critical point. The critical point being the base depth that you need to be at in that bore. Now if you go to the grade bore wizard, what this does for you is if you have some topography built in, you have two points that you need to maintain a certain grade on or in between it will hold that grade for you between those two given points. Another way that you can get to these two bore planning wizards is if you simply click on this 
tab here. That's the planning wizard tab. Again, you'll get the critical point bore and the grade bore wizard come up on the screen. The third wizard I want to talk to you about quickly is the entry reversing wizard. What the entry reversing wizard will do for you is it will allow you, if you look at this picture here, to flop your bore plan around. So say you got out to the job, you had the job planned with these topography points in this direction, but for whatever reason you decided you cannot do this job from this direction, by using the entry reversing wizard, all your plan points stay the same, it simply flops it for you, and now you're starting at the opposite end of the bore plan. In this session, what I'm going to cover with you is how to use the critical point bore planning wizard. What I have here in front of me is a simple topography laid out. It's 110 foot long with a small creek built in that's uh, 5 foot deep. So at this point, all I need to do is go to my wizards tab, click on bore planning. I'm on critical point bore already, so I'll just go to next. It's going to ask me what the product bend radius is. Let's pretend that it's 70 foot. The entry point or entry away, I want to leave it zero. My plan length is 110 foot long. The critical depth, the depth that I need to be underneath the base of that creek, let's say is going to be five foot. Click next. Then what it does is it brings up the portion where I'm going to choose my horizontal drilling unit. Let's choose JT520. Notice it changed my drill pipe length, 4 foot 11. The bend radius for that pipe is 70 feet. And let's just go in at a minus 24. Click finish. And there you have it. It's just created a critical point bore. We have our entry point, our critical point where we need to be below this creek 5 feet, and then we have our exit point. Say for any reason we wanted to move these points here, at that time we can. All you have to do is go to plan, click on the move tab, then you're free to move these points anywhere you would like. Anytime you pick up a point and move it, remember it'll bring up the properties box and allow you to fine tune that point if you will. So basically we've just created a critical point uh, bore using the bore planning wizard. What I'd like to cover in this session with you is how to utilize the grade bore planning wizard. What I have here in front of us is just a simple uh, topography again uh, with, a, with a large creek that we'd like to maintain a, let's say a, a negative 2% grade from this point to this point. So it would be about a 40 foot uh, portion that we needed to maintain a grade on. So if we go up to our planning wizard tab again, click on bore planning, go to the grade bore, what we're going to do, the main point we're concerned with is this what we call the near way point where we're going to start our grade. We're not necessarily concerned with our entry point or exit point. So these two points here are what we're concerned with and you'll see as we use this planning wizard how that will come into play. Click next. Our product bin radius, let's just make it 70 foot again. Our near way, I want to start this at 40 foot. 40 foot away from our punch in port is where our grade bore will start. The plan length, this plan length here is the actual length that your grade bore needs to be. So I want to have it 40 foot also. The base depth needs to be 5 foot. We want to be 5 foot under that creek. Our plan grade, we want to maintain a minus 2%. Hit next. You come to your uh, drill machine again. Let's do this one with a uh, 1220. Notice our bend pipe radius changed, pipe length, go in at a minus 24 again, click finish. There you have it. You have your grade between these two plan points is a minus 2%. The way you can see that is if you go to new bore, click on your reports page, if you look at these points here, this is the portion of the bore where it's holding our minus 2% grade. Notice that at our 
exit points. We don't have a, uh, a plan point and also on our entry point we do not have a plan point. That is because the main thing on the grade board that we're concerned with is this critical grade point between these two points here. So we've just created a, a grade board with the grade board planning wizard. Okay, in this session what I want to cover with you is how to utilize um, the bore reversing wizard. What I have here is a simple plan uh, planned out using a JT520. It's a very short bore, 130 foot long, uh, starting up here on this elevation and, and wanting to punch out down here at the bottom. Say for instance uh, we got out here and we could not set up the rig here, we had to do it from this end. Well, instead of having to go in and change our plan points that I have already created, we can simply go up to the wizards tab again, go to the entry reversing wizard, select next. What we're going to do here is we want to change, the only thing we're going to have to change basically is our entry pitch. So we can change it to minus 18, that's what I had uh, on the plan that I created, hit next. One of the other things I want to point out before you actually reverse your plan is read these two statements here. The first statement basically is telling you that uh, when you do reverse a plan it does not always create an exact mirror image, especially if you uh, want to reverse the plan several times. So I recommend that you save the original plan before you reverse it. And also if you do have an image feature tied to uh, your plan, which I do on this board, and you'll see how it will affect it, that you may have to manually move that image after reversing the bore plan. At this point we can click on finish. Notice it just swatch, swapped our bore plan around. So now we're coming in down at the bottom and then punching out at the top. This is the point where I would have to move this image feature. We haven't talked about image features yet but I can show you how to move that. It's just like you would move any of these plan points like I've already shown you. All you have to do is click on the image layer, click on the move button, simply click and drag the image to the point you want to drop it at. You'll get a properties box. You can fine tune it if you want. Minus 10. There you have it. You've just reversed the bore using the bore reversing wizard. What I'd like to cover in this session is basically how you can email TMS Plus files to other users of the TMS Plus program. Say for instance you have several people in your company that also utilize TMS Plus. They have it installed on their computers. Um, it's very simple for you to create a plan or profile and then email that to them. All you have to do is if you're at the main control panel, TMS Plus, click on plan, go to existing file because this will be a file that you've already created yourself. Find the board that you wish to email to that person, highlight it, then right click on it with your mouse, scroll down to send to, scroll over and then down to mail recipient. Once you click on mail recipient your email server will pop up. All you have to do at that time is type in the person's email address you wish to send it to. The TMS Plus file that you highlighted is already attached to the email. Once you send it to them, when they receive it, they can click on that TMS Plus file. They can open it up, view it. They have full access to it. If they need to make changes to it, if they want to print anything off, they have full access to do that. Okay, now say for instance you're not using an uh, email provider that's attached directly to a network. Um, so you, in other words, you use Yahoo or Google Mail, something like that. All you'd have to do in order to email these files is simply go to My Computer. Then if you go to your C drive, go to program files, scroll down until you find the TMS plus files. Inside of the data folder, this is where you'd find those jobs that you would, once you got into Yahoo Mail, uh, Google Mail, whatever email server you're using, you'd simply attach these files from here to that email. In this session what I want to cover with you is how to 
email files, TMS Plus files to non-TMS Plus users. So say for instance you have a customer or a contractor that you need to get this bore profile sent to for them to view. Uh, you can do that by creating, turning your TMS Plus file into an HTML file. Now although, although they will not be able to manipulate the plan or make any changes, they can still view it and see where the product was put in. They can also review the reports page or pipes page. Now to turn one of these TMS Plus files into an HTML file, all you have to do is if you're at the control panel and you click on plan, click on existing file, double click onto the job that you want to open up or send to them. Now say for instance we want to send Bear Creek Crossing or this screenshot to your customer. What you would do, everything that's visible here on the grid is what they will see. So all you have to do is go to the print tab, make sure you click on screen visible map. Next just click the print preview button. Even though this small box popped up and you can't see all of the screenshot, they will see what is over here on the grid. Next you're going to click the save tab here. Notice it opened up into the TMS plus file. What I recommend here is that you save this HTML file in a location that's easy for you to find. If you want to save it in this TMS Plus file, that's okay. Typically what I would do is either save it to my desktop or to my documents. So for now, let's just save it to, into my documents. We also have to name this file, so let's name it Bear Creek Crossing. Once you click the Save tab, you've now created an HTML file in your My Documents folder for you to be able to email. Now let's go find those two files. Well, I'll explain. There's, there's two files that were created. One was an HTML file and the other one was a .png file. So for us to be able to email those to your customer, let's go to My Documents. Now if you notice, here's the Bear Creek Crossing, the HTML file we created. Also, the, the file that was created was this .png file. This file, both of these files, have to be sent to your customer in order for them to view that plan. In this session, what I want to cover with you is how we'd go about emailing a reports page or a pipes page to a customer. Say, for instance, the TMS Plus file we just created, uh, the picture of the bore profile, you had emailed that to them to view. They also want to see the pipes page for that job. All you have to do if you want to include the pipes page from the previous job you just sent, click on plan, go to existing file, choose that job again, open it up. Now because we want to send the reports page from this, we need to highlight the bore layer over in the layer field manager. Go to the reports page tab. Once you click on it, remember this is what we call our pipes page. This is rod for rod data on that job that we just sent them. If you would click on the Save tab at this time, remember you want to choose a place to save this that you can find it later that will be easy for you. So we'll choose My Documents. We need to name this file again. We'll name it Bear Creek Crossing Pipes Page. Notice it's going to save it as an HTML file again. Click Save. Now let's go find that file. Go to My Documents. There's our job, our HTML document that we created, Bear Creek Crossing Pipes page. If you notice, there's no .png file this time. The reason why that is that we had to create the .png file or send the .png file was because on the last session when we sent the bore profile it had images attached to it. Anytime you're emailing an HTML file that includes only text, which our pipes page, all it has is text on it, you do not have to attach a .png file with it when you email it. So from here, if you were just to highlight the Bear Creek Crossing Pipes page, right click with your mouse, scroll down to Send To, scroll over and then down to Mail Recipient, once you click Mail Recipient, it will bring up your email server at that time. 
that HTML document will be attached to that email. Simply email it to your customer or contractor and they can review that pipes page. Okay, now say for instance you're not using an uh, email provider that's attached directly to a network. Um, so you, in other words you use Yahoo or Google Mail, something like that. All you'd have to do in order to email these files is simply go to my computer then if you go to your C drive, go to program files, scroll down until you find the TMS plus files. Inside of the data folder, this is where you'd find those jobs that you would, once you got into Yahoo Mail, uh, Google Mail, whatever email server you're using, you'd simply attach these files from here to that email.